Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see all of you. Guatsi, Helpa, Du Hiname, Zatuitza, Shui Mihanu. Greetings, tribal leaders, friends, and colleagues. I'm honored to join you for tonight's reception and to be in the company of such outstanding champions for Indian country. To the folks at the National Congress of American Indians who organized this beautiful reception, thank you. Our new era for Indian country, one that prioritizes our needs, our people, and our life ways, wouldn't be where it is today without all of your vision and tenacity. Tonight, we celebrate two fierce decades of advocacy from the Violence Against Women Task Force, a pow powerhouse joint effort between women, between NTAI and the Indigenous, National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. Together, their teams are leading the charge alongside tribes, advocates, organizations, survivors, and families at the forefront of our work of our work to address the emergencies like the missing and murdered indigenous peoples crisis. You continue to inspire me to do the most I can as a leader in the Biden-Harris administration and as a native woman who understands on a deeply personal level what this crisis has done to our communities. The promise that I made to address violence across Indian country continues to be one of my top priorities at Interior. Upholding this promise is just one way that I honor those who we have lost, the survivors and their families. As a girl, my grandmother, mother, and aunties were strong role models for me. I watched them stand strong to preserve our language, our food, and our traditions. I still draw strength from the courageous women I have followed my entire life. This is something that connects us as Native women, drawing from each other's experiences, stories, and expertise. It will help us rise to meet the challenges we face, individually, but also collectively. Each of us is intimately aware of just how severe the crisis of violence against women and children is, and the work ahead that is necessary to address it. At the department, we are taking concrete actions to make a better, safer future a reality. The reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, which President Biden signed in 2022, is a pillar of this ongoing work. So many people put their all into this reauthorization, which resulted in a stronger VAWA with increased special criminal jurisdiction and also more services and support for survivors of domestic and sexual violence. In Congress, I champion these provisions to ensure that services and resources for support programs to address violence against Native women and children were included. I also help lead the effort to pass the Not Invisible Act and Savannah's Act. These laws take steps to address the missing and murdered Indigenous peoples crisis by identifying gaps in information sharing and data collection. As Secretary, I am committed to carrying out the implementation of these laws across the department so that our loved ones have the support and the protection they need. The Not Invisible Act Commission, established by our agency and the Justice Department, brought together members of law enforcement, tribal leaders, federal partners, service providers, family members of missing and murdered individuals, and importantly, survivors, to host public hearings, engage with communities, and identify the ways in which Congress and federal agencies can best address this crisis. Last November, the Commission submitted its recommendations to the Department and Congress, which emphasized a needed focus on tribal law enforcement, recruitment, and retention, survivor and family services, and cross-jurisdictional coordination. Our responses to those recommendations are in an interagency review, but we hope to make them public very soon. The Commission's recommendations will help us identify further gaps and resources that exacerbate disproportionate rates of violence across Indian Country. It will also help us reshape our existing efforts at the Department, including through our Missing and Murder Unit. 
Our department is also making a concerted effort to address violence in our communities through the fiscal year 2024 budget request. That includes requests for increased funding for the Tiwahi Initiative, which enables tribes to design their own programs for the delivery of the Bureau of Indian Affairs program services, including public safety initiatives for children and families. By integrating tribal traditions, customs, and values into the delivery of these services, we can ensure that community safety and resilience are at the heart of program implementation. These steps won't solve everything, but they represent important progress that will help ensure our communities have the resources that they truly need to thrive. Thank you all so much for your passion and your commitment to creating a world that serves each of us. I'm so proud to be your partner in this most essential work. In particular, I want to thank the survivors. Sharing your stories will continue to drive action. Know that your trauma does not fall on deaf ears. I see you and I hear you. I am inspired by you and I stand with you. Dawa Thank you all so much. And the